Today I'm going to be doing the Windows 8 Developers install. It's super easy to do, step-by-step -step tutorial I'm going to provide. I just wanted to check out the new Metro user interface and make my own opinion about it. I've been hearing a lot of rumors about it, a lot of gossip, opinions, some good, some bad. So I just want to make my own opinion of the new Metro user interface and the way Microsoft is handling apps in their environment. So just keep watching it and I'll show you guys how it's done. Open up a browser and go to the URL on the screen. We're going to go to the Windows 8 Developers Preview page. You can find all the tools you'll need here, including downloading the ISO image of Windows 8 Developer. Windows 8 to work on my system, I have to go into the BIOS and go under the system security to go ahead and enable, right here I'll show you a picture, enable the virtualization technology. Initially they're both disabled there as you can see, I enabled both settings and then I went ahead and saved my changes in the BIOS and I went ahead and restarted my machine and then I opened up my Oracle Virtual Box. Virtual Box is a very simple program to use. If you never use it to before, I'll add a link right here. The first thing we do is provide our virtual machine name. Then we'll allocate some memory for our virtual machine. I'll give it 2 gigs for Windows 8. So we're going to create some disk space. For the Windows 8 install, we're going to choose the default, but here we're going to choose fixed size. This is a very important part for Windows 8 installation to work. Here's the virtual disk summary, and we'll go ahead and click create, and it'll just take a few minutes to create our virtual disk space. Once the virtual disk is done, you can go ahead and create your virtual machine. Let's click on your virtual machine and we're going to change a few settings before we start. Now click on details on the top right and we're going to go ahead and click on system, then processor and we're going to name, enable our physical address extension. Now go to the storage options and we're going to point our CD drive to the Windows 8 developer ISO image we downloaded in the beginning. The Windows installer will now load and the installation process will begin. During the installation, go ahead and do customize so we can format our hard drive. We can click new, we're going to select our size, and then we're going to click apply. The rest of the installation will continue as normal. Once the operating system installation is complete, we're going to select your PC name. Windows 8 comes with a number of setting options in this developer's edition. You can go ahead and take a look at it there. The login options are also slightly different. You could also use your MSM Live login to log into your computer now. I chose to create an account. You can go ahead and provide it a password, a password hint. Once it's done creating your account, it's going to bring you to your new Metro user interface. To enter your traditional desktop environment, go ahead and click on your desktop app icon in your Metro interface. It will bring you to your what it was traditionally your desktop. To go back to your Metro, go ahead and click on your Windows button on your keyboard. On my desktop, I'm going to go ahead and open up Internet Explorer and check out the browser. Now I want to take a look at the control panel in Windows 8. It's a very simplistic design here, really easy to find and follow what you're looking for. Now I want to take a look at what an installation might look like. So I chose OpenOffice, went ahead and downloaded that, installed that, and let's go ahead and take a look at our new OpenOffice app buttons in the Metro interface. I'm going to select my OpenOffice Writer app button. Notice how it opens up the desktop, brings up my application, and what it might traditionally look like. One of the features I like about the best about this interface is that the app icons themselves keep information updated for, like, example, Twitter, your stock. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Please let me know what you guys think of the new Metro interface below. I'm just curious what you guys are thinking about it. Uh, for myself, I think that the user fit interface might be great on a tablet device. Um, you know, the icons are easy to use, the interface is really easy to follow, very simple. And maybe for an entertainment unit in my living room, if I had a touch monitor, that would be awesome to have in my living room so I could keep track of like stocks, news reports, Twitter, Facebook, 
you know, bring up a browser really easily, that would be amazing. It would look super slick too on a touchscreen monitor somewhere in my living room, just a great entertainment unit. But as far as putting in my office for real productivity, I just don't see that happening. The, I use way too many applications to be scrolling through that Metro user interface, the way they're setting it up. Um, but as far as everything else, I think it might be actually a really cool operating system, but not on my workstation where I need to get a bunch of work done. So I would think I would not recommend this to real power users. But if you're using like this Internet Explorer maybe daily and not too many other applications, then yeah, this might be great for you. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching.